dual review is brought to you by spiderwolf.com. On today's dual review, it's the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I'm RJ. And I'm Nick. Let's get to it. Hey everybody, today is the 20th and we're taking a look at the movie, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. That's right, and this came out in 2003, it was directed by Stephen Norrington, and I think this was the last movie he directed because he had so much, so many problems, he was like, you know what, I'm not directing anymore after this. Funnily enough, this is also Sean Connery's last movie that he did where he was not voice acting or anything like that, this is his last legitimate really? role. He was like, yeah, I'm sure done. sure about that? Yeah, yeah. That, w one of the things that I read as far as trivia goes said this was his last movie because he's tired of the new age way of making film, which is unfortunate. So, um, yeah, so whatever. Right. Uh, that's unfortunately why there was never a sequel, I guess. Anyway. I, I guess. Yeah, there was supposed to be a sequel. In fact, they set it up to be a sequel, but nope. Uh, so the plot is basically a team of extraordinary gentlemen is formed to battle the likes of the, 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 the insidious Phantom, uh, who's going around and he's building weapons and he's tearing down banks and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. He's fighting two sides of a war. And there are so many literary, uh, 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 um, what's the word I'm looking for? Tie-ins. Tie-ins, thank you, tie-ins, um, that, that are just thrown in here. You have, uh, obviously, characters from great literary works. You have uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. You have uh, uh, Alan Quartermain. You have uh, uh, Mina Harker from Dracula. Um, Captain Nemo. Captain Nemo from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Uh, Dorian Gray. Mm. Uh, who am I missing? Am I missing anyone? Oh, oh, Der, uh, um, Tom Sawyer's in here as well. So you have so many things, plus other things thrown in, uh, in the backgrounds here and there. Uh, there's uh, some references from um, Edgar Allan Poe and others. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the uh, the gist of it. Why don't you take it away? This, this movie is a lot of fun, and it actually, I really do enjoy it. Um, I think it actually holds up really well. It's one of those things that the a lot of the special effects were cutting edge at the time, but they really still hold up pretty darn well. Like a lot of those, like Rocketeer and shit. Yes. Like you can immediately see, like, oh yeah, green screen doesn't look like he's flying at all. This one, it's re you're really hard pressed to see. They do a really nice job of mixing mixtures with or, um, uh, miniatures with CG and whatnot. And uh, yeah, they have a kind of a delicate touch. There's the Invisible Man in this, and he freaking it's great. It's an Invisible Man. It, because of rights, uh, there was a problem <laughs> with rights. They couldn't use the uh, Invisible Man. But I mean, they actually like black out his mouth, so he looks like there's you know invisible inside of his whatever because he uses makeup to show his face kind of thing. Right. And uh, they, you know they hide his eyes with sunglasses, so they do a really good job of that stuff. Now, having said that, it's a little on the nose. Uh, think uh, you know Indiana Jones, but in an era where Indiana Jones is not you know, enough anymore, or not hip enough anymore, I don't know, it's just so, again, we kind of complained about Doomsday being, and I w this is much better than Doomsday, but we complained about it being, you know, the music is perfect, like, here comes the bad guy, you know, kind of stuff, and I think this suffers from the same thing, just a tad, just enough for me to notice, mm -hmm. and it definitely pulls from that Indiana Jones kind of feel of, you know, big spectacle and, you know, set pieces and stuff, and then they try to do the character, and I think for the most part it really works. I mean, it might sound like I'm kind of bashing it, but I'm not. It's just, just that's the only part that I can kind of pick apart and say it's slightly dated that way. Um, otherwise, you know, there's some great action. All those literary characters are just a lot of fun. My favorite is Dorian Gray. I love that story. Yes. Which is really funny because I didn't even know this, and I'm kind of ashamed I didn't know it, but apparently it was Oscar Wilde. Yes. Right? Yes. It's so not an Oscar Wilde story, and and the thing is that people say, I you know I looked into it, and people say that it's because he was kind of disillusioned, and you know he, he's gay, and in a time where that was not whatever, and, and just kind of it, it showed a darker side of him because most of his plays, like I've actually been in Oscar Wilde plays before, and they're very you know fantasy and you know imps and stuff. I mean they're very yeah they're very light hearted in a way, but they always deal with something serious. But this is so serious, like Dorian Gray is so serious. Yeah. Anyway. Seeing his character and then, you know, the fun of the painting and the, you know, the core story. We have the similar thing, you know, treatment for like Jack, Jekyll and Hyde and just all the characters. Um, I, I like the portrayal of uh, Captain Nemo and the Nautilus, you know, I think that's a lot of fun. It's bigger than life. And yeah, and I think the Nautilus went a little too overboard. Maybe, but... It was I, like three stories tall and an entire city block long. When I think of like the top three vehicles I want to own from a movie, 
the friggin' car, whatever it's called, and from the Nautilus yeah, yeah. is one of them. It's yeah, so that awesome. Is awesome. And it was like one of the first things where I was like, "Hey, steampunk is awesome," you know, kind of thing. Like, fun, it's not technically steam, but like, I read I read a lot of fun facts Victorian on this, and I have no idea why. But one of the, one of the things about the car that they brought up is, in one scene, you actually see Tom Sawyer driving it, and he'll put his foot down onto the pedal, uh, the gas. Uh, and you'll see three pedals, so you'll think that the the one on the end is the clutch, but it's not. It's actually the the left side brake. So there's actually a left side brake and a right side brake, which allowed the stunt drivers to give more maneuverability for a what was that was like 20 foot long car. So I mean it was it was crazy, but yeah, it was awesome to know. Yeah, and I, I so I am, appreciate all these touches, the literary touches, and obviously there's one other character that I'm glad you didn't bring up because it kind of spoils it because his name is just like yeah. In this era, it's like, yeah, you should know who that is. Anyway, but then we get, you know, touches of vampire and whatever. And there's just a lot of fun to be had in this film. And again, I'm I'm sorry that there was no sequel. They definitely set it up at the end. Yeah. But not so much. I think that Sean Connery, if, if he was agitated doing this, he didn't show. Because I think it's a, a excellent job. I, yeah. I think this is a great film all around. Really. I think everyone does a great job, yeah. Uh, the set pieces are big enough. And I actually like the practical effects of Hyde. I do too. Um, even though they are a little bit wonky. Yeah, they kind of look spongy almost. Yeah, it's just... I, I, I like that. I really did like it. Although... The other guy, and again, not spoiling, he's all CG, yes. and he still kind of works, too. Agreed. So, I, yeah, I, I do like this movie a lot. It's not the best movie in the world, but if it's one that you haven't seen, then you definitely should. Right. And hopefully it'll make you, you know, interested in stories that maybe you haven't, you know, read, like right. Dorian Gray. Um, one of the things I wanted to bring up is this is actually based on a comic um, called The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen by Alan Moore. Um, the problem is, is there's a very big departure from... Um, Alan Moore's take and this one. In fact, Alan Moore said, I don't like this movie. I don't like the movie version of my comic because it wasn't anything like it. Although they did set up the sequel to be a little more like the the comic. It just never happened. Yeah. So, uh, If I mean, that's true, then I can understand. But yeah. taken on its own, it's, it's great. I just I just love seeing all of the, 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 the characters from literary works just kind of put in there. It's yeah. just so cool to I see. I totally agree. Um, so you were, you were wondering if I liked it or not. And... You were going to say something about that. Uh, what? Whether or not you liked it? Yeah. Well, I was going to bring up the fact that Alan Moore didn't even like his own his own work. I was wondering if you liked it. I loved it in spite of that. You mean you thought I wouldn't like it? No, I, I figured you'd like it, but I just I just didn't know how much you would like it. Oh, okay. It. Well, it's not like my favorite movie or anything, but it, it's fun. It, you know, it's set during World War One, and you get to see, like, Zeppelins and Tank and stuff. Yeah. Or maybe not during World War One, but that era. Right around. It was, like, 1899, I believe. Yeah, and, and except for the whole he who shall not be named and kind of gives it away immediately because you're like well why is he in there you know uh a apart from that it's just a really fun ride right and uh what's her name is awesome she's she's cool I, I she plays that's like one of the the roles that i think of when i think of vampires I, I, peter wilson yeah i really like her in that peter wilson plays mina harker who was the uh the bride of well, the, the one that dracula was searching for yeah ties to van helsing yes kind of thing so I, I yeah I think she does a great job. I mean, it's like there's this one moment where she's like <laughs> that that I think is a little ridiculous and my wife's like ah oh, stupid but it's kind of cool. Yeah, I like yeah. her outfit and stuff and, and so then she whatever. Adjusts her hair like that. One of my favorite scenes job. actually is um the Dorian Gray being shot scene because it's just like and his hair is like on. Oh dude, I love that scene. I also like it when Dorian Gray's on one side and and she's on the other and they both get wounded and you see them healing together but it's different. Yeah, yeah. And how his like heals and falls to ash and stuff. It's really cool. So, yeah, we, we've stayed away from major spoilers, um, but there's, you know, a couple little twists that are a lot of fun. Uh, nothing that's, like, earth-shattering or anything, but it's it's fun. And seeing, like, Venice and stuff. Uh, the one hole that I kind of see is what they do to stop the destruction of Venice. It's yeah, like, it kind of really? like, really? That's what it's you're not do? a forest fire. That's all I'll say. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, but but I, I highly recommend it. If you, if you missed it for whatever reason, um, the Tom Sawyer edition is a little weird for me. Do you like that? I... It's funny. Apparently you did. They, I, I liked. I liked seeing Tom Sawyer. Is there Sawyer. a story I'm not familiar with? No. Basically, they put Tom Sawyer in there. Well, actually, there is. Um, there's two sequels to the original Tom Sawyer um, book, and that's one where he's doing adventures like Captain Nemo, and the other one where he's a detective. Really? Yes. Okay. Um, um, but was, Tom, th they actually put Tom Sawyer into the movie because they were afraid, afraid that us U.S. Care, uh, uh, viewers wouldn't we feel care. left out. Yeah, we wouldn't care about the movie because there weren't any Engl uh, American actors in there or yeah. American characters. It's it like, was one really? of those things. It's like, well, that should have been Billy the Kid, but it's wrong era. So yeah, they just yeah. had to find somebody that's comparable or whatever. 
Um, but yeah, uh, uh, that actor does well. Yes. In fact, I was remarking that I, I don't think I've ever seen him in a movie that I've liked more. Uh, Shane West. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, all around solid movie. Yeah. If you've missed it, go see it. And I think I really think Dorian did a great job. I think uh, Stuart Townsend who played Dorian, I, I liked his portrayal. It was so cool. Okay. And uh, the English actor who plays, you know, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, uh, that was like his first major U.S. role. Cause... Robert Louis Stevens. Uh, I'm sorry, not Robert Louis Stevenson. Uh, <laughs> Jason Fleming. Fleming. Yeah, Fleming. He, you know, he was big for Lockstock, right? I believe so, yes. And so I think this is really his first American role that was like breakthrough. I could be wrong about that, but this is the first time I remember seeing him like right. an American, you know, full-fledged, full-budget full movie. All right, guys, uh, I think that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow our great playlist. Game Lab's been a lot of fun. Yes, it has. And please leave comments. We love comments. And you can help support us by buying our wares at spiderwolf.com. That's right. T-shirts, a car game, art prints, short stories, and more. And if you're on Facebook, so are we. So find us and friend us. And if we're online, if I'm online, I'll chat with you all day. That's right. We're both blogging as well. You can find me, fisk37.tumblr.com. I'm blogging as characters, releasing character sheets, updates to the world I've created for 10 plus years. Uh, take a look if you like it, share it, support me that way. And mine is nicholasbach.tumblr.com where I have short stories and poetry, so if you're interested, check that out. All right, guys. See you later. Quartermain. Oh, you're Quartermain. Quartermain. <laughs> Next time, it's week three of DC's Villains Month. See you later. Quartermain. Oh, you're a quarter man. Fuck, man. Fuck. I'm Tom Sawyer, I guess, because he's not quite as good. I Today. Like, I like that dynamic between them, though. You know? I, I think that worked out. Yeah. Even okay. though he was just kind of thrown in there. There's definitely some hokiness to it. I guess that's also why I compare it to Indiana Jones. Like, the old Quartermain, false Quartermain, and like, in two seconds, yeah. he reveals himself, yeah. you know, kind of thing. Well, it's just to get rid of the rip rap. And the music and the big reveals and whatever. Yeah. But it is a solid movie, so. Yeah. So check it out. Oh, yeah.